I'm yeah. Alexandra Cookson. I'm the data quality trainer with the Metam support team. Um, and uh, we uh, help with navigating Neo and Synergy. Um, so we're, I'm here to help support in that navigation. I am Pamela Fort Taylor. Um, I am the school enrollment and approval consultant for the state. Most of you, um, I believe, on the screen are going to know who I am. Um, I get a lot of questions, and this webinar today is designed to sort of catch you up on the latest and greatest in uh, home instruction functionality, and then um, so we've we've flipped it a little bit. The beginning of the webinar is really the new stuff, and then um, towards towards the middle or or end, Ali is gonna um, is gonna take through navigating to the home instruction site for those um, who are fairly new to to this process, and I know there will be some. So let's get started. Um, so, this is our mission and vision. Um, we, we try to show this at the beginning of every presentation. And what's new in 24-25 for home instruction? So, this year we added some pretty exciting stuff that, that folks have been asking for. Probably not every single thing, but, um, but quite a lot. So um, the point of contact, and we're having a little bit of technical difficulties um, getting some of these things just ironed out. So if you can't do it, please let me know some of these things um, and we'll, we'll um, make some reports and get the tech folks on it. Point of contacts should now be able to submit new forms and edit um, records for last year, so 23-24. The current year, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, for 23-24 and then the current year, 24-25. And then between that April and June 30th um, time frame, uh, you will be able to uh, edit for a future year and, and enter uh, records. So that's something new. Um, there is also a new check mark for indicating that assessments have been checked. So um, that's useful because you'll also see that on the, the listing screen, um, just for a quick check that, that you've already um, done that, that deep dive into the record. Uh, there's a relocation function. Um, there are more listing screen additions that make it a little more simple. And, and I'm going to go through all of these um, in more detail a little bit. Um, some of the SAUs were um, grade-based, and so they were um, they they were flipping all of the notices to me before they could get to the SAU, and that meant the, that the acknowledgments were kind of screwed up. So that's been fixed, and we will have. Um, on the resources tab in the website, there's going to be a new FAQ just for superintendent offices. So um, that should go up in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping. So this is the new uh, listing screen with the additions. We've got over at the right hand side, the very right hand side, um, there's a relocate button. Now that should be lit up. That was, that was, that's been corrected. So that should be lit, lit up. Um, we have added some fields. We ha we've kind of squished the child's full name and the guardian full name over there. Um, we've kept the SAU in the town, but now we have street address. Um, we also have whether their first year, subsequent year marked up, um, and that shows from the form. Uh, and that checkbox um, for whether or not the assessment has been checked uh, shows in, in the column where it says assessment received. And then we've got a current status date that was entered as well. So those are all exciting new additions to the listing screen. And of course, when you go to 
um, export to Excel. Um, those will all be there, so you'll have that permanent record that you're required to keep um, as of June 30th. Let's see. So, um, a lot of people have called me up and said, so, so what do people do to prep for the upcoming year for home instruction? And I'm going to do a little bit of, um, of screen sharing uh, in a minute and show you a little bit about sorting and viewing and um, what the screens look like. Um, so, so first of all, you should review your list. Um, you should talk to your student data specialist for your student information system and make sure that there's alignment there. Um, some uh, SAUs initiate communication early in the spring so that um, so that the folks that they're expecting forms from um, you know get a reminder and you know to 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 get that assessment done and um, a reminder of the process um, one thing to keep in mind is that eligibility in law is four years old compulsory age is the sixth birthday so in between those two dates um, there's really uh, no uh, way to um, there's there's not a usefulness to submitting a, a, a notice of intent by the parent unless they feel that they just want to do it um, if they if they do want to do it it allows it at four years of age um, but then they they have to repeat the first year um, status until the year when they turn six after which they do um, uh, an assessment will be due so before that age an assessment is really not not due um, Receiving submission notices, so when you get that acknowledgement, um, it's still not going to say a person's name on it. Um, that's a FERPA violation. However, um, when, when I show you the sorting buttons um, in the listing screen, you can pretty much go in and tell who, um, what notice has come in um, once you get that, that acknowledgement. Um, always check that that April to um, June 30th time frame there's the potential for uh, lots of parents to be putting in um, the wrong year uh, when the new year is added on April 1 it's usually the first selection that um, it's the default selection so they have to try if they want to um, go in and so do you um, and and enter one for say 23 24 during that that time period um, but lots of times you know folks will make mistakes it's just part of the part of the world so check for check for duplicates and wrong years that's very important to keep your um, your data clean um, you can if there's a missing piece of information like birth date or age or uh, physical address you can look in previous years to see if that information is there um, if uh, the parent didn't or doesn't want to supply it remember that there is a release of information um, that needs to be done uh, just like regular public school students, they need to um, they need to opt out of of recruiter information. So um, that should that should be married together with the forms that go out to um, to the public school students. They should also be going to home instruction students. Uh, you will be asked for verifications. Um, uh, just be very careful about who's on the other side of the phone and make sure that you um, check their credentials and their connection to the student um, before you verify. 
Um, there, I will be including in the FAQ a verification letter uh, template that you can use. So that might be helpful. And then just uh, make sure that you take a look at your local filing and retention um, requirements. And that's between you and your unit and your unit's lawyer, I guess. Um, so I'm going to go and just look at... Um, Pam, I'm going to pause you just for a quick yes. second. We had a quick question. Okay. Um, could you repeat what information needs to go home with homeschoolers? So, so the the opt out information goes out every year to all the students for for um, information the the uh, name and address you know kind of thing so that recruiters can access it under law and parents can opt out of that. Um, you would need to talk to your data manager who would be very uh, familiar with that. So um, a year or two ago, and, and I can resend this, anybody can email me and say, hey, resend that um, information on, on the opt-out for recruiters and I'll get you that. Um, but it went out maybe a year or two ago um, that we, we have to do that for home instruction too. Okay. Okay, moving on. So I wanted to just kind of make sure that we're, let me make sure that I'm logged in. I just, no, I am logged in. Okay, so this is, this is a test database, so nobody has to worry that, that there's any information out there for your own um, SAU. And um, plan with it, I, I was coming up with, Here's the home instruction notice screen that you always see um, as the SAU. So you can complete a home instruction notice from scratch here, um, or you can view the home instruction student listing. Here is the one um, for parents that, that SAUs are not allowed to use. And there's a reason why. Um, when you enter the form for uh, a parent, you have to have that form and you have to have their signature. But on this form, where the parent does it, they sign right on it. So, so let's go in and look at that. And the way that that looks is, um, you know, they, they go ahead and enter, you know, all the things you do. And then when they get down to the bottom, so they don't have to, they don't have a submission of a form part up at the top like you do. But when you get back down to the bottom, they have and two assurances. One is for first year and one is for subsequent year. So if they have three students listed up there and two of them are subsequent year students, they're gonna check both of these. Um, and every time, so I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you go back in and look at somebody that has entered that. And by the way, when they enter it, just like when you enter a form, they have the option and the obligation to print or save that form. Um, so that they have it because that's a requirement, a statutory requirement that they have a copy of their form. Um, you can share it if they lost it or whatever, but um, they really need to be having it. So here again is the listing screen and the listing screen, see this one has the relocate button um, link live and then it has the edit and view. Now, the create new is grayed out because as you know, create new is only live when you have the previous year's record in front of you. So if I were to pull up for one of these students, the 2324 form, um, I would be able to edit and view and create new but not relocate. Okay, so the create new 
is, of course, for those who are new, the Create New Button is a fabulous thing that they built several years ago where um, it it takes all of this year's information, so 2324, um, and then it duplicates it for the following year, so you don't have to enter it all by scratch. Um, you do have to upload the new assessments in there and verify that it's the same address, same email, that kind of thing, but it, it significantly cuts down on the amount of time that it takes to, to enter one. So I'm going to show you the, if I were to click, oh, first I'm going to show you this. So this listing screen has all of these items on it. And each one of them, as Ali can attest, has this up and down arrow. That means that you can sort by any of these fields. So if you get a notice, or if the superintendent gets a notice that there's a new notice, what I do is I go into the submitted date and I, I sort it and um, I bring the top one, the latest one up to the top. And it's a pretty good bet that that's the one that was submitted the most recently. So um, that's the way you do that. So if I were to hit this edit button over on the right because I wanted to um, make a correction or something like that, we're going to see something a little bit different. We're going to see the same screen and all the same things. And if there was a file uploaded here because it was entered in the SAU, then that will show that right there. And you can see that that this is a subsequent year student that I put in. And I entered their assessment there. Now, if if you click on that assessment and you say, oh, um, you know, that looks like a valid assessment. It's not something bogus or whatever. Then you can check this mark and uh, checkbox and it will show as that you checked it. So again, it's a short way to um, know from the list that they're all set. Um, and you'll see a new section down here in the edit screen that isn't on the entry screen where you can make notes. So for instance, if this student had graduated, then you would be going into the last year that they attended or had a form, right? And you would be putting a note in here that says graduated per parent email. You would attach that parent email up top and you would attach their um, final assessment right here. And that way, looking back in history, um, it will show that they homeschooled for four years and there's their final assessment on their final year um, and they graduated. So that's the way it's kind of designed to work. Um, this new relocate button that's um, on the right hand side of the listing screen. This one I have actually never used. It just came to be and um, so it's it's just designed as as a shortcut so that everybody knows that the student doesn't live in this SAU anymore. The student lives over here in this SAU. So what it does is it takes the whole record and it freezes it in time so that the old SAU can see it and the new SAU has has um, a new record for them. So it, what it does is it brings up the record and you're going to fill in the physical address, the new one, okay? And it's going to be the same way. It's going to select the um, school district and when they relocated and then any files, any final files. Um, and then you're going you're gonna to click Submit and then it will it will appear in the other 
SAU's um, listing with the date. And, and you can see on your listing screen um, the word relocated. So pretty slick. Um, any questions before I go on? I, I wanted to show you those. I think we went over viewing and editing, creating new and relocating, so. Okay. As you all know, sometimes the portal has glitches and parents may call and say, I tried five times, I couldn't get this, um, this form to uh, submit. So you want to ask some questions. Is there a long file name or weird characters um, in the attachment? Um, if they try to submit it on their phone um, or sometimes a Mac. Um, and uh, those are pretty much the, the glitches that happen. Usually, usually, um, you know, I think we've worked out the kinks over the last six or seven years, so it should be pretty good. So a couple of inquiry scenarios. Um, I think I went to uh, over um, the graduation and, and so forth. Um, what if what if someone calls up and says my high school age student is I'm I'm pulling them out and moving them to homeschool. So I just I wanted to share with you that one of the things that I do is I ask a lot of questions about that. I say, are you aware that home instruction isn't the same as, you know, the the credit system in the high school and and so forth. And every once in a while that that sort of um, turns things around a little bit. Um, not that home instruction is bad, um, but but sometimes you just want to make sure that that parents aren't caught unaware with a structure that um, they they maybe didn't know everything about. Um, a lot of parents call about verifying that the form went through, so um, that's that's sort of a quick fix. Um, the verification letter I mentioned already, that's in the FAQs, there's a template. Um, where do I find an assessment or a, uh, or a teacher to perform a portfolio review? That's not something that I actually offer guidance much on. Um, so if you know of some folks in the district that do portfolio reviews or a source, um, might be good you know, handy to have a note about that um, on your desk just so that you can provide that. Um, and I also get a question about unaccompanied youth, um, unaccompanied youth who you probably know this already, um, unless they're 18, they can't submit their own notice of intent um, or enroll themselves. Um, these are these are sort of known gray areas, and and I can't I can't really solve these things, but I'm I'm very much aware of them. Um, so as you know, the superintendent is required to roster all the students um, between the ages of six and seventeen. Um, but how do I know if there's a new home instruction family in your SAU? Well, you don't drive around and you know looking for them but but pay attention to you know things that you might hear and um, you know just try to keep a heads up and um, if there is somebody maybe they don't know how to do it or maybe they were in a state where they didn't have to report before um, things like that so it's good to be aware of that um, we don't, as you know, have a tracking system, a truancy tracking system for home instruction, uh, particularly, well, if they have never been in the student information system before, then there's really nothing. 
But the expectation is that you do follow up and try and, you know, sort of tout the benefits of, of following the law in, the, in that instance. Um, I already talked about four-year-olds. Home instruction doesn't collect grade level. Uh, parents are uh, responsible for the, their student and what level they're at, if they want to accelerate, decelerate, um, where it matters. And I've told this to many a parent, many a hundreds of parents, that um, if where it matters is when they go back into the public school, of course, um, then then it's up to the school that uh, where they place that student. Um, if they ask for records, uh, they never get the original. Um, originals are only school to school. Um, and maybe even not that um, often um, folks just send copies. Everybody probably kind of knows the difference between home instruction and equivalent instruction. But I'll tell you now, it's really a, a parent choice. So there are there are equivalent instruction schools that report to us as equivalent instruction schools that serve home instruction parents. And it depends on how they, the parent, decide to uh, characterize their student. So if they put in a home instruction uh, form and they're attending one of these equivalent instruction students, uh, schools, then they're a home instruction student. Um, if, if, if they made a mistake, then that's not something we can assume. If you, if you have a, an opportunity to follow up and say, are you sure, um, that's a good thing. Um, otherwise, an equivalent instruction school is the one that reports that student to your office and you roster them in that other category of equivalent instruction and you file that paper in your equivalent instruction school file. Um, assessments, there's nowhere written down. Um, the types of assessments that are um, uh, allowed by, by a parent. Generally, I say it's, it's a certified, they have to be certified right now. Uh, main teacher's uh, portfolio review letter. The letter is the, the piece of paper. Or it can be a standardized achievement test. And we generally, out loud, say, that the Seton testing series is allowed. That's the California, the Iowa, the Stanford, um, of course, the Nuias. They can they can request to test with the public school students, um, and if there's room and if if there's capacity, that kind of thing, um, then they can do that. Um, and they, otherwise, they kind of have to do their find it themselves. Um, if they leave the state, it, and this is kind of a local decision, it, it, it really is. Um, if, if they leave for three months and go far and wide, um, then technically they're not physically here and they don't physically meet the, the eligibility statute. So um, where it says you have to be a resident of Maine and you both have to be putting your head on a pillow at night in the state of Maine. Um, if they leave the state for three months, um, there's a number of creative things that you can do to keep them connected. Um, sometimes I, I've heard that they go to home instruction and then come back and come out of home instruction. Um, that's not something that 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 I recommend, but but you have the ability to look at your policy and see what um, folks want to do in in your SAU. Pamela, we had a couple of questions. I just wanted to throw your way okay. before we get too far. Too Absolutely. 
Um, can the new SAU enter information under the relocate tab or does it have to be the previous SAU? That was one of the questions. Okay, again, I have not played with this, but I believe it's um, you. It's the record. Once you get it, it's your record. The, the new SAU's record. I don't, you can't initiate the the transfer over from one SAU to the other, but once it gets to you, then you can edit and and keep going with that record. Does that answer it? Donna, does that answer your question? Okay, I think so, perfect. Um, another question we had is, what is the criteria to review a portfolio? Does it just have to be a certified teacher or is there other criteria to that someone has to meet to be able to do that? No other criteria. So just certified teacher? Yes. Okay. Main, main certified teacher. Main certified teacher, okay. Right. And then we have, if the parent only supplies a NUIA assessment for ELA and math, are they also required to submit more information about the minimum number of days in other subject areas? Not under any legislation. Okay, those are the questions I have so far. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I pretty much showed you all this stuff. Um, if it's in the summertime um, and, and you get a, we moved or we graduated or we dropped out, then you update the old record. If it's mid-year, oh, actually I did not show you that. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say this is this one. So there's a status field. So see this see this current status field right here. If you're mid-year and somebody moves out of the state or um, you know, exits home instruction in some way, then you want to make a note about it. You want to date it. You want to attach whatever file um, prompted the, the, uh, the change. And you want to change this to stop home instruction right here. And that says, um, nope, they're not a home instruction in our roster anymore as of this date. Um, otherwise, in the summertime, you just don't add the new record. Okay. I think that might be all. There was another question that came in too. Okay. Um, they have, there's a significant number or significant population of Amish residents who do not register for K through eight. What is their res the SAU's responsibility for that situation? Oh, well, K through eight is um, they they need to uh, they need to be rostered in a form of instruction. Nine through twelve, no, but K through eight, yes. And that could be through just notifying that they're doing home instruction, correct? Well, they have to do they have to do the process. I mean, if if they have a school that they're attending, then that school would be the one to report. If there's if they're doing home instruction, then a home instruction form has to be filled out for each student through the eighth grade only. Moving on. Um, okay, so I already covered this. I got ahead of myself. And I finally, I just want to tell you that um, 
as these things are rolling around in your head um, and September 1 is approaching the, the big the big deadline um, and uh, yeah so I'm going to be doing office hours uh, they'll be Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Um, from September 11 to October 30th you can log on and ask me any questions you like and I will just be there And I think that we're going to flip it over to Allie and um, and let her do this part. OK, Allie? Yeah, and this is going to be, I think, pretty quick from what I understand. Um, so instructions for locating the report. This is actually different. I did not get a chance to update it yet. Um, so the Medems Help Desk website has been rebranded to Medems Support. And all of the guidance for the in superintendent's instructions for home instruction portal, that can be found on the student guidance page, the student data entry and reporting page. Um, so that is all still right there, it, but the data reporting instructions page no longer exists. Um, so it would be um, on that student data entry page. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, this is, Pamela, your page. Do you want to talk anything about these resources that are available? Uh, yeah, these are just the URLs for all of the um, different resources for home instruction. Um, it's got the latest paper form is always on the requirements, forms, and laws page. Um, so I haven't updated it for two or three years. It hasn't needed it. Um, but there are these other sort of useful items that might help you answer questions if you have to. Um, and then that home instruction resources page is where we'll have the FAQs just for you. Um, uh, and then there's the home instruction statutes and inf information. That was, it was um, done a number of years ago, but most of it is still very relevant very no, no laws have really um, changed regarding home instruction so um, yeah and then there's a frequently asked questions for everyone or for uh, mostly for parents uh, there was a question that came in while you were chatting about a resource um, is there any is there any sample letter uh, that a district can send to a family they know is homeschooling but has never provided a notice of intent. Um, I do not have one. Um, not being in in that sort of position, but um, I would I would be very happy to share one around if anyone else has a good one that they want to share. We can sort of connect each other. And then what do you, uh, what do we do when we ask people to register and they don't? Kind of along that same lines um, of not submitting a notice of intent, I guess. Right. I mean, it's a sticky, it's a really sticky problem and, and I understand that. Um, you, I would establish, uh, you know, repeat communication process, and then once you feel that that you've done your due diligence, um, you would you would properly file that so that you could show backup. Um, that's all we can do right now. There are going to be um, some. I I do know that the truancy rule is going to be reopened this year and hopefully there will be um, at least a sentence or two about home instruction. I would love that. All right, I think we can go to the next slide. So yeah, so this just reiterates that um, there are portal instructions for the superintendent. This was fashioned by your team, Allie, and there's a paper form 
um, that's that latest form that should be printed out and maybe kept some copies on the front desk in the superintendent's office so that um, they're right there. And September, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Pamela. Um, oh. So the uh, due date for home instruction notices is 9-1. That is a Sunday this year. Uh, it is the Sunday of Labor Day weekend. So it's coming right up in like a week and a half. Uh, so just kind of be aware that that is coming up. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, so locating the home instruction list. So these are just kind of the steps to get through to, and how to note it, how to get to them. Um, so you're going to go into student data, then into home instruction, enter a home instruction, and then it will say view home instruction students listing. If you don't have access to student data in NEO, you will need to have an access request submitted on your behalf. And then the data team will process that and get you your access and your account information or update your current existing account if you already have a NEO account. Next slide. And I'm just going to emphasize right here because it's the perfect place that if you're not, if you're seeing, uh, ooh, and it's gone. Darn it. Yep, it's gone. If you if you're not seeing this, if you're seeing the other one that I showed previously, where you're going in as the parent from the dashboard, so the the dashboard is going to be where home instruction parents go not through student data so if you're here and you're trying to enter a form you're in the wrong place okay pam gets to go back okay all right so this is just a little navigation of that uh, that screen that we were just looking at. This is going to look very similar. So okay. um, from the NEO one. dashboard, you have okay. student okay. data. And so we, we click that. So next slide. And then once we're into student data, home instruction. So we're we'll select that. And then enter home instruction. This is that screen that Pamela was just showing on um, the dashboard before. You have these two options, complete a home instruction notice, and then creating a new um, or finding your students in the listing. Again, this is just what Pamela was showing before. So this is gonna be where you would find your students. This is your listing. And then we can go to the next slide. Um, Pamela, do you wanna talk about this a little bit? Uh. This I, is I just think, letter of intent and how you would get notified of um, home instruction. Okay, so yeah, this is so these are just um, the different ways that you can get a notice of intent to provide home instruction. It it's never going to be um, you can only have it in the portal, or or parents can only you know submit it on this particular form. Yes, I emphasize have the latest form available for them, but they're going to get old 10 year old forms from somewhere else sometimes. And um, if it has all of the information that um, is required, then um, then that's an acceptable um, notice of intent. And you can and you can submit to the portal from that whatever that piece of paper is. Um, If it doesn't re contain the required information, like if it doesn't have the date of birth or the physical address, of course, they can also just put the age. Um, you can do, uh, you can follow up with them. You can look in old records to see if um, if there's a an older record that contains that information. Um, but uh, follow up is the best way to do it. Yeah, along that same line, we did have a question that came up in the chat. Um, the two questions that kind of go together. So one of them is, does law enforcement get involved if families refuse? And then what type of documentation do you suggest districts keep to protect the district, pr proving that they have done everything in their power to inform families? So that is really a local question. 
I'm sorry, but that there's a home instruction policy that has to be kept um, in every SAU, and that should be considered at the board level. What, you know, how far do you go, and and you know what is your actual process for follow up, and when do you stop? There there isn't any guidance, any hard and fast guidance, because the legislation doesn't provide any. The follow up question is, is there a state statute for that? No. Well, the, the truancy is the is the closest state statute, so you can look at the truancy statute. Technically, if um, if they don't provide you with an age that they're they're truant, but um, you know, again. Home instruction is so not regulated that it's 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 really going to be a local choice as to how how much you follow through uh, hopefully you follow through with baskets of fruit and you know other really positive things that make them want to come back to school but no um, so there isn't really legislation for that is there any work towards a, a statute or anything? I know that there's um, the follow. Another follow up question is why isn't it regulated um, similarly? Right, and and so that's why I mentioned that the truancy rule is going to be reopened, and um, if if folks can, you know, when a rule is opened, everybody gets to comment. And so if if there's um, not somebody from from my office or or, you know, from the state that's that's incorporating home instruction and including them, then, um, you know, I'm hopeful that 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 will be caught and that, you know, folks will kind of address that in the truancy rule. Because that's where it, that's where it really lives. I'm going to stop sharing. Are there any other questions at this time that anyone would like to ask about home instruction? Kathy Garish? You'll have to unmute your microphone. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I have a question regarding the equivalent instruction versus home instruction. We have adult ed who we have to report how many classes students take through the adult ed program, which are regular students that have dropped out of the high school but go to the um, adult ed program to finish up. Would those be considered the ones that we have to get their names and put on the list? No. Okay. Adult education, I think, is going to be registered as part of your school administrative uh, uh, information. Allie, you would know this question. <laughs> right? Uh, for adult education, is that the question? Yes. And how to enroll them? Those students are are reported right as part of the the school uh, information system. They are not enrolled for adult education. They are actually transferred out to adult education when students go to adult ed. It, it's it varies though. It depends on the the format of the adult education, I believe, um, if it's through the high school or not. Okay, I, 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 we might have to follow up with that and yeah, get Let's back to follow you. up on that one. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other questions?
Pam, do you want questions to be directed toward you? Um, if there are questions about home instruction. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as, <laughs> yes. And and thank you so much for coming and listening to me, Amaron. And um, <laughs> it's always great to to see your face, to see your names. Can't see your faces. And this will be uh, recorded and posted on the DOE data page. And I think Pam, Pamela Ford Taylor will also maybe take it and put it uh, where she sees fit, uh, any link on her page. Um, so you will have access to that after the presentation today. It will take a couple hours for it to be processed, but uh, slides, we are not providing the slides, just the recording. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. Have a great rest it's of your a, Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Yes, it's a wrap. There we go. I just turned my camera off because people were walking behind me. But <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like that. They don't need to be part of this. <laughs> Are we um, done recording? I think we're still. We can turn it off. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. Stop recording. Stop. Perfect. Stop that recording. <laughs>